And so today we're just going to discuss a brief evolutionary history of the blue whale, which is the largest animal to ever live on Earth. Um, starting with the earliest known ancestors, um, the creature that you're looking at is Indohyus. It lived around 48 million years ago in southeastern Asia, in parts of what is now India and Pakistan. The first fossils of this creature were discovered in India in 1977. Um, just for size reference, it's roughly 60 centimeters long, which makes it around the same size as a raccoon or a house cat. As you might have guessed by looking at it, these were mostly land animals which you wouldn't expect from relatives of a whale. Um, however, they did have extremely dense bones, a condition which called osteosclerosis, and that allowed for these creatures to jump into the water to, uh, and would submerge for long periods of time to hide themselves from potential predators, which uh, many people believe was the beginning for the transition from the, this, this lineage from land into the water. Uh, as you can guess by looking at them, when they were first discovered, their relationship to whales was really not clear. Uh, I guess the story goes that a professor who was overseeing a fossil collection at Northeastern Ohio Medical University had a work study student cleaning the fossil of an Indohyus one time when the student accidentally broke off the ear of the fossil. It was only then the professor discovered a bone wall around the middle ear of the Indohyus, which is really indicative of whales and their relatives, which allowed for this to be identified. Uh, this is Pachycetus, which is another uh, very distant relative of whales. This lived roughly 50 million years ago during the early Eocene period. Uh, at one to two meters in length, they're roughly the size of the average dog. The name Pachycetus means Pakistan whale, which as you can guess, the first fossils of this were discovered in what is now Pakistan. Their teeth shape suggests a diet that consisted mainly of fish, which again leads its way to the aquatic lifestyle that we now associate with whales. Uh, they weighed about 100 pounds on average, so like I said, about the size of a large dog or maybe even a wolf. And these are believed to be the last ancestors of whales that had a mostly terrestrial lifestyle. Uh, this is Ambulocetus, which also lived during the early Eocene period. As you can tell, it's much larger than Pachycetus or Endohyus. Uh, researchers were able to trace back oxygen isotopes found in fossilized bones of this creature that suggested that they live primarily in brackish water, like bays or estuaries. So we're seeing more of a transition to the aquatic lifestyle, again, that we now associate with whales. They also, as you can see, have shorter limbs more muscular tails and their limbs are more paddle-like, which suggests they spent a lot more time in the water than some of the earlier relatives. Uh, maybe the most interesting part of the lineage are uh, Basilosaurus and Duradon. These both lived during the late Eocene period, so between 41 and 33 million years ago. Duradon, which is more dolphin-like, that name means spear tooth. As you can see from the fossil at the bottom of the page, they have very sharp teeth. Well, Basilosaurus means king lizard, since the original discoverers of the fossils thought that it was actually an ancient lizard before they discovered full fossil records. Uh, both, features, both of these creatures featured noticeably shrunken hind limbs, as you can see in the diagram here, which is a clear evolutionary step towards the features of modern whales. The hind limbs are actually almost completely gone. Basilosaurus, which is up to 66 feet long, was one of the largest species to ever exist from the KT boundary 66 million years ago until the appearance of modern baleen whales 15 million years ago. And the Basilosaurus diet consisted mainly of duradon as a food source, which I thought was interesting. Uh, modern whales are split into two groups, the mysticetes and the odontocetes. The odontocetes, or the toothed whales, consist mainly of dolphins, orcas, sperm whales narwhals, beluga whales, and a couple of others. They tend to be smaller, more social than mysticetes, and they use echolocation to communicate. The mysticetes are a group of much larger whales, including blue whales, humpbacks, gray whales, bowhead whales, and some others. They are much larger than the odontocetes and use low-pitched songs to communicate. As I mentioned earlier, the blue whale is the largest animal to ever live on Earth. It's roughly 80 feet long and lives and weighs up to 330,000 pounds. And mysticetes have these special keratinized structure called baleen plates, which act as filters for small organisms from swallowing food. So this picture is actually a humpback whale. 
you can see the bristle-like structures where you would expect the teeth to be. So they swallow large amounts of ocean water and those bristle-like baleen plates would catch on to things like, would catch things like plankton, which uh, the larger whales would eat. And then here we just have illustrated much of the phylogeny that I went over uh, in the last couple of minutes. And I just wanted to point out that the closest currently living relative to modern whales is the hippopotamus, which you can see in the phylogeny as, as the out group. And uh, that's all I have. Thanks.